to talk about one of the most feared complications of any cardiac interventions. I have nothing to disclose. Uh, my case, uh, this is my case profile, 53 years male, diabetes, ACS, inferior MI, post thrombolysis came to us with the ejection fraction around 40%. Angiogram revealed a flow limiting lesions in the mid RCA and a moderate disease in the LAD. Being a culprit to artery, we thought we could tackle the RCA first. And it's a routine angioplasty, any day, right, right radial approach. They are guide wire prepared with NC and 3.5, 33mm of drug gluting strain was deployed. And this is the angiogram done. And you can see uh, this routinely happens when you take out the wire and we give the final shot. Uh, this is the angio, uh, this, you can see there is a grass dissection uh, starting in the aortic coronary cusp and it is extending into the ascending aorta. Luckily, it doesn't involve the aortic valve. That is the advantage of for, the, for us on that day. Otherwise, we would have definitely sent the patient for surgery. Um, this, is, this is one of the feared complications which can happen to anybody else. We should be always careful. The exact mechanism is still not understood clearly. It could be due to catheter manipulations or strong, very strong injections. Sometimes it can happen during the wiring and balloon also. And uh, so, luckily, uh, after several attempts, we could be able to wire the true lumen and the proximal RCA, the C, uh, dissection, uh, dissection entry flap was sealed with a stent and with adequate protrusion into the aorta. And we watched and followed up the patient in the next three days and um, with a echo and CT, uh, I was not able to add that. So there was complete healing of the ascending aorta uh, dissection also. This is the angiogram done after two days. You can see uh, it is completely healed and uh, fortunately for us, uh, we could be able to save this patient. Because this complication, this is a follow-up on this, uh, can be sometimes when it uh, ascends into the ascending aorta and involves the aortic valve, um, most 40% of the time patient needs open heart surgery and many times 10% of the time patient needs aortic valve repair also. So um, this complication should be avoided at uh, all costs. So a few words about this, uh, uh, thoughts about the aorta. Iota coronary osteal dissection. Friends, it can happen during, even during routine diagnostic angiogram or during any interventions. And the incidence, exactly, we can't say because only we have a registry data available throughout the world. It can range from less than 1% roughly. And most of the time, RC is involved than the right left coronary artery. It has, it has been due to the differences in the anatomy and the type of collagen present in the left coronary sinus and the left coronary artery, ostium, when compared to the right coronary artery, they have found out that type 1 collagens, which is far more present in the left system, is resistant to simple tractions and dissections, whereas the angulation of right coronary artery and the absence of type 1 collagen is prone that it, it is one of the registry data which is uh, coming from over a center around 140 patients over a period of 20 years. They have found out that 85% um, of the time it's the right coronary artery which is going to dissect if you are going to inject forcefully or if the catheter is not coaxial. Uh, that's the thing we should always keep in our mind. So the mechanism, exact mechanism is not clearly understood and it can be vary from um, catheter manipulations and wiring, ballooning, etc., etc. And this just, you can, just shows that catheter manipulation, con strong contrast injections, wires, guide, gu guide extensions, and balloon, these are the uh, conditions which can cause this uh, fearful uh, complication. So uh, Dunning et al. has proposed a classification of this angiographic classification. It is an angiographic classification you can see. Um, if it is involves only the aortic coronary cusp, ostium of the cusp, it is grade one. If it extending up to four centimeters, it is grade two. And if it's extending more than four means, it is grade three, Dunning class, class three classification. Most of the class one and class two can be managed with stenting of the ostium. And class three also, many times, we can use a stent to, as a bridge therapy. 
and we can follow these patients with trans esophageal echocardiogram and the uh, CT uh, iotogram. Um, if it is expanding means then patient definitely needs aortic root repair and aortic valve replacement sometimes may be essential. Um, so that's, so this is an example you can see. Um, even diagnostic angi angiogram clearly shows that in this patient the guide is not, the angio, uh, sorry, the catheter is not sitting properly, it's deeply intubated and that we should always avoid. So this is about this, and this is the uh, data, ob ob observational data from that center. It's the largest data available currently at present. Over a period of 20 years, 140 cases. In that series, 50% had a class three learning classification, and that's a severe type of this complication. Many times patient, 40% of the patients need to open heart surgery. So uh, to conclude, this complication is also, uh, even though it's infrequent, sometimes may be potentially catastrophic and sometimes can even result in death. And in that series, it is around 6%. Um, covering the intimal flap or the tear is one of the initial strategy we should always try. And uh, if a dissection is more than 40 millimeter and if it is extending into the ascending heta, open heart surgery and TAVAR may be sometimes be useful. Thank you. <laughs>